Yes, uh, we would be looking at another Daksha paper and this is on the science of the Daksha paper. If you have seen the last part which was on the instruments, uh, I had said a lot of gain on the microphone so that's why the audio on, the, uh, on that video is not that great. Okay, coming to the paper, um, it has been uh, posted as a preprint on archive last week. And it's a collaboration between five institutes, um, IIT Bombay, RRI, PRL, IUCA, ISRO, uh, and TIFR. And uh, there are a lot of students, um, full-time staff, scientists um, involved in this project. This project is an X-ray telescope, which would be the world's most sensitive telescope. Uh, it would be 13 times more sensitive than uh, SWIFT, which is one of the highly successful X-ray telescope in the X-ray community. And uh, this paper would talk about all the science cases that are possible with Daksha and uh, let's go quickly into it and see. So Daksha is a, a mainly a, a X-ray instrument and it would be studying uh, transient ob uh, like events like a gamma ray burst and um, there, are, there are a lot of uh, transient events. So uh, there are short gamma ray bursts, long gamma ray bursts, fast radio bursts, uh, like pulsars and so on. But in X-ray, uh, we do want to study the soft X-ray spectra that comes from this kind of uh, bursts which happen throughout the universe. They are rare, but if you uh, have the entire night sky, then uh, you do see a lot of events of uh, one every few days. So uh, that's why we need more sensitive instruments so that we are able to um, detect more of uh, this event. So the energy range of this instrument uh, would be in one kV to one MeV and there would be three uh, detectors on it and uh, this uh, project would be also part of the multi-messenger um, initiative that means that uh, that we want to provide triggers uh, that help follow up uh, ground-based follow up and also help uh, uh, to correlate that transient event with gravitational wave event if that is detected so that you can say this as a EMGW, which is electromagnetic counterpart to gravitational wave. And this is the crux of why this mission needs to be done currently because uh, it's an exciting area of uh, astronomy where uh, there is a lot of communication across all telescopes and science group, but there's also a lot of communication across different kinds of astronomy. You can say gravitational wave astronomy, radio astronomy, and uh, optical and X-ray. So yeah, India already has a um, AstroSat mission which was launched in 2015 and there is an onboard CZTI instrument. Uh, Daksha is mainly taking the legacy technology from CZTI and um, using solid state detectors to detect um, uh, this high energy photon. So this is the CAD model. Uh, we have seen it uh, in the previous video as well. There is uh, three packages, lot of instruments, PCBs and uh, there, there would be two of these satellites uh, at in low earth orbit uh, giving us an effective area of 86%. This is the graph that we also saw in the instruments paper. This is effective area versus energy and you see that Daksha has a lot of medium energy boards which gives it a lot of uh, large effective area per satellite. And these also, uh, and the detectors itself have a large energy range. So th that uh, gives us more, uh, more scope for uh, uh, more scope for uh, getting sensitive data and uh, getting useful data. Uh, that is what, if that makes sense. Yeah, so now we'll go about uh, the science drivers. So as I said, EMGWs is the main part of Daksha. Uh, we want to detect EMGWs and this is something which is a rare thing to do. And um, in 2016, uh, we detected GW170817. Uh, in 2017 and that was a very big event because we detected that event in Fermi uh, through X-ray and also through LIGO, uh, LIGO Hanford Livingston so they also detected and this signal was studied a lot there have been a thousand paper published in a thousand days uh, 1200 days so which speaks volume about how this transient events this EMGW events can uh, push forward science a lot so yeah, uh, main, uh, this is, uh, Daksha is still uh, in proposal stage, but the main aim of Daksha, if it is deployed, is it would give uh, fast triggers as well, and the downlinking would be in one orbit of the LEO, but the triggers is what matters. So to make sure that a GRB event is detected, so 
we do want some kind of onboard localization algorithm which tells us that uh, there has been a GRB detected and um, uh, and this message can be transmitted across GCN, IPN and uh, other follow-up uh, uh, telescopes can look into it. So yeah, various science cases. I won't be going into the full details. Uh, it's uh, There is a lot of things to study about compact objects, which is which is like you can say, we always say star stuff. So we are made up of uh, star stuff. That's because these compact objects, uh, they explode uh, in forms of supernova and they they are the drivers for heavy metals. So uh, they they have a lot of, um, they, they splew a lot of uh, material and energy, uh, for energy in light, gravitational waves, so on. And this energy is in jetted form sometimes. Uh, it's never in uh, isotropically sent out. So there is a lot of things people study. I, I'm not an expert, so I won't uh, comment, but uh, GRBs is a fascinating uh, thing. It's a fascinating phenomena, phenomena, uh, phenomena. And uh, there is a whole uh, area of research where people just try and model and think of how the compact object must have exploded, what kind of um, like thermodynamic process or high energy physics must have happened uh, when the com compact object uh, exploded. So there are various calculations done beforehand, which is about how um, the rate calculations for EMJW. Currently, uh, EMJW rates are abysmally low. Uh, and that's because uh, the detectors need to be sensitive, the gravitational wave detectors, the X-ray detectors need to be sensitive. It goes hand in hand. Uh, yeah, so that's it. And yeah, uh, so as I said, EMJW, then we also want to study gamma rays in detail. So this is uh, section two, which talks about various kinds of gamma rays, uh, red shifted gamma, gamma rays, faint, uh, faint, uh, faint GRBs and so on. Uh, so this kind of GRBs, uh, like over 100 megaparsecs away or even more, uh, they would have, um, like we, we do want to first of all localize the source and get as many photons as possible from that source so that we can uh, characterize like those kinds of GRBs which we have rarely uh, seen uh, up to date. So this is some kind of um, uh, detection rate um, uh, like calculations that has been done beforehand. So there, it is arbitrarily taken long GRB, sh short GRB, long GRB and short GRB. Uh, it's well defined in the community. So the for the short GRB, uh, if we compare Swift and Taksha, uh, we have that the Swift uh, we see that uh, the rate calculations is order of 10 power 1, so 10, uh, 10 uh, GRBs per year. And if you see for Daksha, it will be over 100. And we do want to see more than one GRB a day. Uh, that would be a success for this mission. So this is the rate calculations. Uh, it, it involves a lot of uh, things. Uh, I won't go into the details of flux, fluence, uh, and various kinds of uh, directional properties. I don't know, spectra, so range of flux, that also is a factor in this calculations, yeah. And then um, this is uh, talking about some kind of studies of, um, with the, which would be possible with soft X-ray. So uh, there is prompt emission, which we would be able to study, which is a part of, uh, uh, it's the early phase of the uh, explosion. Uh, it, we always can observe the afterglow because there is a, um, a leeway, you can say uh, the, the robotic telescopes or the X-ray telescopes do have some time uh, to watch and observe a part of the sky which is giving, uh, like which, which has a GRB event and the afterglow of it. But uh, detecting, pro getting prompt emission um, analysis is also important. Also, yeah, uh, this compact objects have a like very, um, peculiar and fascinating central engines. So with this prompt emission, we are able to study them as well. And the main also science case with uh, Daksha is uh, uh, another dimension of uh, studies of high uh, X-ray astronomy, which is polarization. So polarization helps us uh, probe various uh, science cases like magnetic field of the compact object and so on. And um, like it can help us know so many things like synchrotron processes, inverse Compton interaction. These are all the physics that goes on in the compact object. Uh, it, it, I won't go into the details because I know this is dense and 
you need to be a person in excel astronomy to understand it and i am not the right person to explain even if uh, i want to break down this dense uh, application this is a plot made by students at iit and um, it talks about the x ray polarization measurement of daksha and uh, so yeah it talks about the injected values and then the computed values and basically what we see that the the uh, physics uh, the formulas of polarization the fraction and the pa pf uh, they kind of work uh, in this given set of uh, simulations there are also a lot of more science cases possible compact object is a huge field uh, there is a lot of things possible so there can be magnetars which are uh, like the fast radio bursts or re really fast pulsars or heavy objects like magnetars they um, they are also less studied in the current science and we need to detect more of these events and do more science with them also fast radio bursts which has been uh, the forefront of current uh, decade and the last decade so grb physics has been going on since the vela satellite which was launched around 50 years back but frbs is something which is a newer so it's less saturated um, uh, you can see it's less saturated in terms of science analysis uh, I, grb is not saturated in terms of technology means with new technology we can do more science but in terms of in terms of analysis frbs has have a long way to go then x ray pulsars and then no way and so on so there is a lot of uh, science cases possible if you see uh, if you are part of a science group uh, by mistake you have clicked on this video um, then uh, you can visit dakshasat.in and see if you have a potential science case that you want to see um, that you want to see uh, happen or uh, accomplished through this instrument this daksha instrument so there are also studies about persistence sources which comes from uh, like um, like you can also study PBH, which is primary black, black holes, uh, through these two satellite concepts. So there's a PhD student working on it. On it. Uh, very interesting stuff. There is also TGF, which is terrestrial gamma ray flashes. So this Daksha won't also just be looking at the very mega parsecs, uh, like it won't be looking at too far away objects. It would also study the sun as well, and solar flares, uh, TGFs, and so on is a big part of. Um, uh, normal uh, x-ray astronomy and we need to understand them more and that's why daksha also has sun-faced um, medium energy goals yeah and this sums up uh, the paper uh, there are if you can go in depth it, it's well written uh, uh, and there are a lot of science case possible it's very ambitious and the main thing is uh, to accomplish it uh, it would take a lot of uh, uh, new technology i must say in terms of instrumentation science a lot of ideas would need to be uh, gone back and forth i won't be a part of it because i'm uh, just an engineer but uh, at the highest level people do want to take daksha seriously and understand what all science cases it can accomplish and can this instrument be used to make uh, transient astronomy even more exciting than it already is so yeah, that's uh, all about the paper. Uh, it's on archive. You can have a read. Check out other things that um, uh, our group at IIT Bombay does. Uh, I'm just an engineer, but uh, there are a lot of um, great students, science students, PhD students, and um, scientists working uh, on various uh, things in transient astronomy. It's super exciting. Yeah, see you in the next video. Next paper I would be covering is of someone else. So I won't go in that much clarity, but uh, hopefully I would, uh, I, I, I convert something useful in this video. Yeah, see you soon.